My name is Dale Overton. I'm the CEO of Overton Environmental Enterprises. We're a company that manufactures uh, advanced ecologically based products for our agriculture. Uh, and then we also have an industrial division that manages organic wastes for large food processing companies. Today, I'd like to talk about soil biology, uh, the science behind it, and its implications in modern agriculture. I think that there's been a paradigm in modern agriculture and that is soil has been depleted of its organic matter over the last 50 years with the advent of modern conventional ag. It's basically just been considered dirt and been completely mismanaged. Microbes that have formed relationships with plants and soil over the past thousands of years have been ignored and their roles have been discounted for modern day fertilizers. And what this has done is created basically uh, a massive agri-industrial complex that completely discounts what um, Mother Nature has naturally done uh, to help uh, plants and agri-systems uh, in their natural form grow. Typically when you look at the modern agricultural fertility programs, uh, pH is the real driver. You look at uh, the nutrient pool in the soil, you determine what the pH is and that gives you your availability of nutrients. Um, it's all chemistry. Uh, it tells nothing about what the plant is doing or what the actual life in the soil is doing for the plant. The other thing that, that people look at is something called Mulder's chart, which is uh, how the availability uh, and presence of certain minerals will impact other minerals. So for example, you've got um, excess potassium in your soil, you'll see an imbalance in magnesium and calcium. However, this again doesn't tell you anything about what biology is doing, it strictly talks about what's happening chemically in the soil. Soil is not just dirt, soil is alive. Uh, it has an immense functional role in the global ecosystem. Again, if you consider a plant, it's got 50% of its biomass is actually under the soil uh, in that root mass. Uh, and that's responsible for almost uh, all nutrient uptake. You get some from the foliage, but mainly your nutrients are taken up from your root zone. Soil houses a huge functional diversity of microbial life. Uh, we know more about the moon than we know about soil. So I think it's really important that we spend time looking at what soil is doing and what, what kind of organisms live in the soil uh, and how we can harness that information and use it uh, to our advantage uh, to help reduce the amount of fertility we're adding into our crops, maintaining yields, uh, but also just creating a sustainable food system. How are those uh, plants getting their nutrients? How is that biomass created? Well, it's created through the activity of microbes and through microbial uh, movement, growth and development, uh, nutrients are released. Um, there's a whole plethora of roles that microbes basically have in an ecological system. Here what we're looking at is a schematic of a soil colloid uh, with some root hairs, uh, bacterial colonies, mycorrhizae, you've got your actinomycete bacteria, um, you've got nematodes, flagellates, you've got your clay and organic matter complex, um, and you've got basically this soil aggregate that's got good airflow and good microbial life. This is what you want to see. Um, you know, ultimately, uh, this is most of this action is happening in the root zone. So as these microbes are doing their thing, um, they're releasing nutrients through mineralization of organic matter, but also through their activity in the form of feces. So if you really take a look at what healthy soil looks like, healthy soil really looks like cottage cheese. It shouldn't be compacted and full of different crop residues and you know have very little airflow. If you have very poor airflow, you're gonna have very low diversity of microbes in your soil and your soil is gonna lose its ability to function properly. This will never break down. Uh, it's got no airflow, there's no fungi. Um, you know, bacteria might break some of it down, but in doing so, they're going to suck up nitrogen out of the system. In a natural system where you have a lot of microbial activity uh, and things run quite naturally, um, that oxygen and that airflow really help to create stable soil aggregates. Here's a series of photos here where we're getting closer and closer into a healthy soil aggregate. And what you'll see here is that 
there are a lot of uh, organic matter, clay, mineral complexes with a lot of airspace. So you can kind of see that um, there's really good potential for this soil to house a really positive microbial community um, that's going to be able to access the resources that the soil has to offer. This is our organics resource management facility in Portage of the Prairie, Manitoba. And what we see here is the process of basically building healthy soil. And we do this by taking food processing waste uh, and blending it with various uh, carbon sources to create uh, what we call uh, a humified compost. And this is kind of like the cottage cheese that I was talking about. Um, as you see, there's, there's larger aggregates, smaller aggregates, uh, and there's really quite a bit of life in here. As you can see, um, there's quite a bit of fungi growing on this product right now as it's in its final stages of growth. So any of the carbon that's left is actually uh, growing fungi on, on the tips. And, you know, the wood chips basically peel apart very easily. Uh, so you've got good degradation going on there. Really what I'd like to talk about uh, for the rest of this presentation is how different microbes function in plant growing systems. Uh, there's about five or six different functions that I want to look at, including nutrient mineralization, um, phytohormone production, antibiotic production, nutrient cycling, and crop residue management. These are the real big things that microbes do that I think are misunderstood, and hopefully we can enlighten uh, the audience on some of these things uh, over the next few minutes. So, here we are in a uh, cornfield in southwestern Manitoba, just west of Winnipeg. Um, and this cornfield is special because it's been treated with a, a biological product. And we've had a very interesting season so far, and this corn actually looks fantastic. Uh, it's probably about ten and a half feet tall. Uh, you got some really nice cobs on it for, for Manitoba. Um, what I'd like to talk about next is uh, how microbes uh, have been ignored in modern agriculture. And mainly that's because fertilizers have kind of replaced the traditional role of what microbes have been doing in a, in a soil. You know, they're easier to manage, they're easier to apply, uh, you can see results immediately. So, you know, there's a, there's a true rationale as to why people would turn to, um, you know, synthetic fertilizers for crops. Uh, but again, I think that discounts uh, significantly what microbes are doing. Uh, so fertilizer overuse tillage have a negative impact on important functional microbes and mainly uh, bacteria and fungi, soil oxidation and mineral export, it's just not sustainable. You know, when you burn your crop residues or you're exporting all your straw and you're not putting any of that back into your system, you're going to be at a net loss. So over time, we're losing organic matter, we're losing mineral concentration in our soil, we're mining them basically, and uh, ultimately you're putting down more and more for less and less return all the time, and, and it's really just not a sustainable system. Understanding how microbes function in bulk soil is vital to creating a sustainable agricultural solution, uh, or system, I should say. Fungi are very sensitive organisms. Tillage really impacts uh, fungi because they grow kind of, they call them hyphae, that grow into a mycelium. And if you till it, you break that up, you're actually essentially breaking or fragmenting those fungi. And when you do it enough, it basically kills them and you lose that function in your soil. 2% of uh, fungi fall into that pathogen category. 98% uh, of all fungi are actually beneficial and have, a, have an important role in the ecosystem. One of the reasons microbes have really been ignored is because we can't see them. There's new techniques that have really kind of unlocked the true secrets of the microbial world and these techniques are called metagenome analysis or genetic analysis. So we can actually understand the who, the what's, the when's, the where's of the microbial world and how then can we use that information uh, to influence uh, how we farm our, our crops and our fields. We can now take a sample of soil and we can look at the, the DNA of all of the different bacteria and fungi that grow in these soils and get an outlook of what that soil looks like from a diversity standpoint. And you can uh, code for phosphorus solubilization or phosphatase, which is an enzyme that pulls phosphorus out of solution. 
um, to help understand and benchmark soil. So you can actually say, we know that this soil has this ability to remove phosphorus from the locked up organic matter because it has a lot of this phosphatase um, enzyme, right? The gene that codes for it is present. Um, you know, and again, this helps to isolate and discover functional microbes that aid in plant growth, disease resistant and development. It's basically bioprospecting. And it's what uh, the medical field is doing to look for new antibiotics. It's what large agricultural companies are doing to try to isolate certain microbes that can, um, you know, ultimately be uh, patented or form some kind of intellectual property and then they can sell to you, obviously. Um, you know, uh, I'm more of an ecological fan myself. I believe that it's more of about a system than one microbe. Uh, so that's why we do what we do, but uh, I'm happy to chat about that with anybody. So this uh, photograph is really of, of the bacterial community that we've isolated from our product called EcoT. So this is a metagenome analysis done by Mr. DNA out of Texas. And uh, this was part of a master's program. And what we can see here is we have a whole bunch of functional bacteria uh, along the bottom axis. And then we have uh, different uh, products that we build at our company. And it basically shows which products these microbes basically come from and how we can uh, utilize techniques to grow uh, and encourage their growth and development uh, using a bioreactor. Uh, so it's very, very cool. And this is really what this whole future of metagenome work is allowing us to do. We can understand using genetic techniques exactly how our soil functions microbially so we can augment the microbial community with fertilizer and allow the soil to feed the plant and not necessarily the other way around. Um, once we can do that, I think that ultimately we will create a much more profitable farming system for, for the modern farmer. You know, if we take a look, the corn is, uh, you know, it's not sending out any tillers. These are really nice uh, long tap roots. Um, you've got these fine, fine roots. So these roots here are your water roots. And then these finer roots are really uh, the homes of the microbes. And ultimately that soil root microbe interaction is kind of where everything's happening. And when you have a really healthy community, you'll see that this just falls apart really nicely like cottage cheese. And that's a really nice soil structure. Ultimately, this is a really hard clay soil, but right in the rhizosphere, right where the plant roots are, you see it's really like cottage cheese. And that's what we want to see. I and mean, that's the signs of, of a really healthy soil. And, um, you know, ultimately this is what we want to do because when we have this, we can really start to reduce the amount of inputs that we're applying to this crop. Uh, now, in this case, I'm not sure if this had a, had a, a fungicide or not. I'm sure that there was a pre-emergent herbicide on it. And, and again, I'm not preaching don't use uh, fungicides or herbicides. What I'm trying to say is if we use biology, we can use those products less and less. And I think that's really the take home message is ultimately to create that sustainable system. We need to rethink about how we use uh, these tools like the fungicides and insecticides and, and um, you know, synthetic nutrients. Uh, for example, uh, anhydrous ammonia is uh, a well-known bacterial killer, uh, as is glyphosate. So, um, you know, again, I think that by understanding the roles microbes play and the value they truly have in the system, uh, we can all do better. We have a system, we know that it's crashed, we want to bring it back into a healthy point. We call this, in a way we have to now be ecological engineers. We have to now engineer our soils back into a position where we can get really healthy crops. We can understand how soil types uh, and planting regime influence biology. Rhizobium is a great example. You don't want to plant um, peas into a field that you've been monocropping corn out of for the past 20 years because your soil won't have the organism called rhizobium, which is very important for a legume to mineralize nitrogen from the atmosphere. We want to understand what demands each crop has and how microbes can supplement fertilizer, so it's a more holistic approach. When I talk about that, I'm talking about functional diversity. If we're looking at ecological engineering, um, the definition of eco ecology is the interaction of all organisms and environment with one another and their environment. So you can't just look at one species, you have to kind of look at it from a systems approach. 
And ultimately, when you're using single species inoculants like rhizobium, yes, they're great for soybeans, and yes, they're great for um, fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere, but they're not necessarily really good at mobilizing phosphorus or uh, pulling zinc out of uh, a locked up soil colloid or anything like that. So again, we want to get that functional diversity and microbes really uh, can bridge that gap, uh, especially as it pertains to micronutrients. Uh, we want to use microbes to improve plant growth and development. Um, so we're trying to engineer that system or that rhizosphere community uh, towards what that plant needs and that plant will also select for those microbes as well uh, by releasing exudates and sending out signals and whatnot. Uh, the other thing we want to use microbes to recycle crop residues or trash back into the soil. So again instead of exporting it or burning it off we can use microbes to actually reintegrate that back into the nutrient pool and organic matter in the soil. microbial roles in plant growth and development. Um, basically plants provide sugars uh, through exudates to the soil which stimulate microorganisms. Those micro microorganisms through their metabolic activity release nutrients which then the plant can actually uptake um, and the plants will shed uh, their biomass and the organisms will reintegrate that back into the soil uh, through the, organ the decomposition of organic matter and litter. So. Um, you've got these direct mechanisms that basically create this closed loop system. Um, that's sustainable agriculture. When you start to export your organic matter, like your straw and, or burning it off for that matter, you're really not doing a service to your system. So it's really important to understand how we can manage that stuff a little bit better. So important ecological uh, functions held by microbes. We've got nutrient mineralization, nitrogen fixation, phytohormone production, antibiotic production, nitrogen cycling, and organic matter management. All of these are very, very important functions and all of them are microbial driven processes. The first topic we're gonna talk about is, or function I should say, is macro and micronutrient mineralization. Uh, again, this is extremely important. As we know, the soil houses a huge amount of mineral nutrition. However, this nutrition is not available to the plants. It's actually uh, a microbial function in natural systems that unlocks some of these minerals for plant uptake. So you got your elements, phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, calcium, carbon, iron, zinc, boron, manganese, uh, copper, uh, molybdenum, are all very important plant elements uh, or elements for plant growth and development. And ultimately what's really cool is bacteria and fungi produce enzymes that liberate these cations and anions from the soil and make them available to the plants. So these are called um, nitrogen fixing bacteria. You know, some of the important enzymes that these organisms produce are nitrogenases, phosphatases, polyphosphatases, kinases, and a whole vast array of other enzymes. Um, so again, it's a very, very complex system. Uh, we can't discount what microbes are doing. Uh, what's really cool also is microbes will, will be stimulated by exudates released by plants. So a plant, for example, if it says, hey, I need a little boost in phosphorus, will actually send out an exudate that will target a phosphorus liberating mycorrhizal fungi or bacteria. So it's a really cool dynamic system and the plant is communicating with the microbes in all sorts of different ways through the release of exudates. So here we are at uh, our worm farm in, in downtown Winnipeg um, for the next section of my talk. Uh, I'd like to focus on phytohormone production and antibiotics and I thought it was fitting to, to come here because I think that earthworms uh, play a really important role uh, in the root zone in natural systems in terms of helping organisms to um, basically move within the soil and also to uh, coax antibiotic producing species of microbes. So first we'll talk a little bit about phytohormones. There uh, are about seven different uh, types of hormones that plants uh, produce naturally. Various bacteria have been isolated that produce these hormones including actinomycetes, gram-negative, gram-positive bacteria and fungi. A, a lot of these bacteria and fungi are associated with earthworms. Uh, earthworms, whenever you see an earthworm in your soil, you should be excited because you know that there's good things happening. And, and root exudates released by plants 
will select for specific functions. So for example, if you've got a bacillus subtilis um, that can produce indole-3-acetic acid, which is a root stimulant, um, the plant will just release some sugar uh, in return, that bacteria will release some indole-3-acetic acid, which is typically an energy-expensive molecule to produce. So the plant is actually expending less energy to create this molecule by feeding bacteria sugar. So it's a really cool relationship. And phyto phytohormone production is something that, you know, I don't think gets enough attention, uh, but it's definitely um, significantly important in plant growth and development. Earthworms ultimately live in a dark, dungy environment that you would think may be pathogen-rich. However, uh, on their, uh, basically I'll call it their exoskeleton, they have a little bit of a slime layer or a mucilage. And in that layer, they actually um, provide habitat for antibiotic producing microbes. So there are many antibiotics produced by microbes, um, and many of which have yet to be discovered. So there's a lot of people searching the soil and different microbiomes in our guts and what have you uh, to discover antibiotic producing bacteria. And uh, bacteria and fungi uh, are the main producers of antibiotics. Uh, so you've got actinomycete, gram-negative, gram-positive bacteria, and uh, also fungi like penicillium, aspergillus. Uh, there, there's a whole plethora of, of fungi that produce antibiotics as well. Um, What's really cool, again, is many of these are associated with earthworms. So again, root exudates released by plants will select for a specific function. So if a plant comes under attack from a pathogen, it will send out a signal into the root zone, and that signal will then activate antibiotic-producing bacteria that can help. Um, so it's an, essentially an extension of the immune system of the plant. Here's just an example of microbial-derived antibiotics. Um, so here you've got penicillin, right? Uh, isolated from Penicillium chrysogeum. Its, uh, it's, a, it act, it's activity uh, is on gram-positive bacteria. So almost every antibiotic that we're using as humans, which has basically saved humanity, have been isolated from microbes. Yet we ignore them uh, when we're talking about soil. So I think that there's a real disconnect there that we really need to come back to and, and understand. Uh, and what it'll do is help us reduce our inputs and create a more sustainable farming system that's profitable for the farmer. Managing residue uh, will really help farmers to improve their soil and also improve their nutrient pool to help reduce the amount of inputs that they're adding uh, in su successive crop years. Bacteria will break down simple carbon compounds uh, and release glues and other compounds for plants. Uh, now, bacteria will break these compounds down, but in doing so, they require a huge amount of nitrogen. Fungi will actually degrade that harder to digest carbon uh, in the absence of nitrogen. So they're actually not sucking nitrogen out of your nitrogen pool. Um, so what ends up happening is if you've got a really good fungal population, they'll actually incorporate that organic matter back into your soil organic matter um, without damaging your nutrient or your nitrogen reserves. So again, fungi release organic acids that help to break down lignin and other complex carbon compounds, and they do it without using too much nitrogen. So uh, that's very, very important. And you know, here's just a photograph uh, from one of our customers who had put down some of our residue buster and immediately they saw um, fungal hyphae colonizing their, um, their carbon. And you know, it breaks down much faster and it's not going to cause any planting nightmares or anything in the following spring. Uh, you know, corn trash is something that I think really can, can benefit from using fungi to break down the residue. Again, I think that understanding how um, to create this healthy soil system uh, to incorporate uh, microbial growth and development and encourage earthworms to come back into our systems uh, is very, very important. If we don't consider it just dirt and we actually look at it as an ecosystem, I think that we can really help to improve uh, the sustainability and profitability of our agricultural systems and, and farmers can really start to, um, you know, use less, use less inputs and by using less inputs you become more profitable. So thank you for your time and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody may have.